the history of AI is very closely tied with DeepMind. They've kind of brought Google and DeepMind together. You heard Demis there. Can I just get your reaction to, to the landscape and that in particular? Absolutely. First, thanks, Ed, for having us. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here always. Um, so we are in the middle of an incredible revolution in AI. It is probably most similar to the personal computer revolution of 40 years ago. And, and Demis alludes to this briefly in his comment when he says, we're in the middle of something very big here. Why do I say personal computer revolution? Because of the impact it's having. Imagine right before the personal computer revolution, you were a typist. And every time you made a mistake or you had to make a change, you'd throw away the paper. Right. You'd you have to put the a new, clink of the you, typewriter. You, exactly. You yeah. Exactly. You throw away the paper. You have to put a new one in. And you have to start all over again. And then the personal computer comes around. And everything is faster. It's easier. It's way more streamlined. But there are some changes. There's some retraining that needs to be done. You have to learn this new technology. Same kind of thing is happening here in AI. So there's this massive potential. We're right in the middle of it. It's been the cornerstone of my career for 13 years. Sequoia, it's been a cornerstone right. for us for 30 years. And uh, it is just the early innings of what's going to well, be a that, very that big That brings us to the here and now, though. So you are principally a seed stage and, and Series A investor. Yes. You know, there are many that echo your sentiments. How do you actually invest yes. in that moment? So... Uh, the, f the first thing is founder-driven, okay? Founders are always the lifeblood of the venture capital industry, the technology industry at large, and definitely the AI industry. So think back to when Sequoia started its venture in, in AI, which was 1992, when we backed at the Series A, the first investment in arguably, if not the most important AI hardware company in the world, NVIDIA. That was a founder-driven investment, it was a founder-driven investment because Jensen Huang was an exceptional engineer from a previous Sequoia company. So founder-driven, as always, with Sequoia. And then in 1999, arguably the most important at-maturity AI company, Google, was also a Sequoia investment. And that brings us all the way to today, which is a lot of great AI companies that are coming up, hundreds at this point, that we're, we're meeting, we're excited to get right. to know, and finding the most brilliant founders for what they're building in the future is what Sequoia's all about. You know, Caroline's Constantine's point, we, we see that activity on the show every mm -hmm. single day, the hundreds of new companies that he's talking about. That energy, it came from OpenAI in November of last year and then Microsoft's investment at the beginning of the year. And of course, Sequoia backs OpenAI. But I'm interested to dig in Hugging Face and then others in your portfolio, Constantine. It feels as though the rest of the VC community is rushing. It feels that regulators are having to be forced to rush. It feels as though this has taken us all by complete surprise. But you've been studying at Stanford AI. As you say, it's been the cornerstone for 13 years. Why have we suddenly been sort of had the rug pulled a bit? OK. So you're exactly right, Caroline. This is actually decades in the making. Uh, and for, for us at Sequoia, for, for me, for our team, there's, there's, uh, this is something that we've been, we've been training for and excited for for decades. But there is a big exciting change, and it is exactly what you described, which is this new user interface. When I talk about the user interface, I'm hearkening back to the personal computer. When you had the graphical user interface, come out. And that was the advent of the first Microsoft Windows. Mm. That was the advent of a lot of the first Apple computers. And the point of the first graphical user interface in the personal computer revolution is that anyone could just use their mouse and click, as opposed to the old terminal-based MS-DOS that only engineers could use. Similarly, the LLMs that OpenAI and others have introduced make it so that Anyone can use AI. You don't have to be an AI engineer. That's why we're in an incredibly important moment. Because all of a sudden, AI is accessible to everyone. And That's also, what's changed. though, the data which it runs on is still, in many ways, not perfect. Biases within. How are you thinking about the startups you invest in and the yes. overall regulatory environment that's going to have to play catch up in some way? Yes. Uh, no doubt. It's, it's the data, and you're referring to hallucination is the term that's often used. This is absolutely top of mind for the enterprises that we're talking to, and there's several ways that are currently being addressed from an engineering 
and a company building perspective to improve that. And in terms of policy, there's a couple responses. One is to step back and say, hey, too powerful, too dangerous, not me. Another is to just say, hey, let it run. And the third way, which is what we take at Sequoia, what I believe is the right approach, is to say, hey, this is incredibly powerful. Let's be involved. Let's take actions to help form it safely. Let's, let's be a part of this evolution of this technology so that it can be a powerful force yeah. of good for humanity. Uh, you're sounding positive. You're sounding optimistic. In fact, we went to our own viewers. We did a Twitter poll, as we tend to do every single day, Constantine. Just take a look at the results, because we asked them whether they're pessimists or optimists around AI. Great yes. for humanity. Actually, Ed, only 22% said yes. Yeah. Yeah, and look, they're too early to tell. We hear it so often. So, Constantine, you, you've been in this field for a long time. Broadly, society is catching up, is, yes. is Caroline's point. There's a parallel I want to draw with crypto because you are, have been an active investor in the crypto industry. I think the latest was EDX Markets, right? Yeah. That is a, 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 a froth and, and bubble burst cycle. Why, why will we not see the same thing play out here in AI? Yes. So, first... I am a believer in crypto as well, but that is a separate trend for, you know, for further discussion because there's a lot of depth there too. On AI, this too early to tell point it is a critical point, and I encourage your audience to, to use AI and to actually start making it a part of their lives. You know, there's, this, there's this kind of trite quote, which is, AI is not going to take your job. A human using AI will. And I think that is a lot of, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, the action that should be taken is to start harnessing the power of AI. If you're not using AI tools, try them out. See how they can make you better. Internally at Sequoia, we talk a lot about augmented intelligence as opposed to artificial intelligence. Yeah.